Hey there, Nangas Stu here. In today's video, we're looking at testing and servicing this low pressure fuel pump from a Mercury outboard. It was from a 40 or 50 horsepower EFI model. Before we get going with that though, uh, Matt got in touch and said, hey, this is me, which is the photo from last week where I've lost the details. So this is Matt Foss from Geelong in Victoria, and Matt's actually wearing a shirt that I used to own, and I uh, got a message from his wife, so I basically sent it down to him. It's a long story, it's in the comments. All right, let's push on and give this one a bit of a test before we start repairing it. So those of you that didn't see the earlier video, this one came from the video where we test and service the VST tank on an EFI Mercury. And this is the low pressure pump that supplies fuel and fills the VST itself so that the high pressure pump can then pick it up and send it on. This particular boat was losing fuel pressure. Uh, it had actually been in before where it wasn't a blockage in the filter on the VST, but in this case it was actually not getting fuel into it to pump at all. In the case of that boat, it was actually a lot quicker for me to get a whole new pump than it was to get the repair kit. And I was actually surprised how cheap the pump itself was, so it was reasonably cost effective too. Now time to pass though, and I did manage to actually get a repair kit for this. So we'll do a few tests on it just to show you what you can do, and then we'll give it a service. The tests themselves I don't find a common thing I do in that they're sort of nice in theory, but the reality is if you take the outlet hose, crank the motor, and no fuel comes out, and you know it's primed, there's something wrong with it. You can also pretty quickly take them apart and see if there's a problem. The nice thing about the test though is you can take it apart without risking damaging any sort of diaphragms or anything and get some idea of the this, this sort of condition of them. So the idea of these tests is you simply putting some air pressure and some vacuum in to see whether there's a tear in the diaphragm and air is sort of passing through that tear. The idea with the tests is that you're putting a small amount of air pressure or a small amount of vacuum in each of the two in and out valves on this uh, particular pump. You're essentially there testing the integrity of the one-way valves inside it, as well as the, any tears in the diaphragm itself. I don't have the service manual for this particular outboard, but I do have one for a Yamaha that uh, talks about the various pressures. And it talks about putting between seven and four PSI. It says it puts uh, four PSI of positive pressure and 4.3 PSI of negative pressure. So I think we'll use that as a ballpark figure of the, the, the sort of the amount of pressure we're gonna use. Unfortunately, it also shows how to use them in a diagram that doesn't have the ports labeled. So I think what we've got to presume is that you're really looking at seeing whether the valves close the way they should. So fuel should be able to flow. In this one, you can see there's arrows where fuel comes in here and goes out here. So the idea being that we shouldn't be able to put a negative pressure on the inlet. We should be able to close that valve and we shouldn't be able to put a positive pressure through the outlet because that's the way the one-way valves are designed to work. If I put my thumb on the end of this hose, I don't have to give it too many pumps and we start getting a bit of pressure. It holds, and I've let it go, it's down. So then, if I go to the outlet, and then give it a few pumps, with my finger over the inlet, you can see it holds pressure pretty well. But if I let go, the pressure goes down straight away. So to my mind, this tells us the diaphragm itself is fine. It doesn't have any sort of internal leaking of air, but these one-way valves are shot. They're doing nothing. Before I take this apart, I'll just go through a bit few of the basics of its operation. In this case, it's from a four-stroke motor. So instead of having a vacuum port that gets pulses from the uh, vacuum inside the crankcase, it's got a, a sort of a little push rod here that rides on a lobe on the cam. So as the camshaft turns, it just pushes this rod in and out and that's where you get the pulses that actually drive the pump. These two openings here are just for cooling water to flow through, very similar to the E-Tech we saw recently, and it has a single in and single out. Some pumps, like the one in this Yamaha manual, have a single in and two outs, so it might feed, uh, say, one out will feed two carburetors, the other out will feed the other two, or whatever. In this case, just water through, single in, single out. To get it apart, there's just these four Phillips head screws, bolts really and they've got some nuts captivated nuts on the other side and a bit of Loctite on them so once they're out you can just tap the nuts from the other side out 
With these apart, we can just start peeling these sort of layers. Essentially, that's how they're built. So, top section here, the diaphragm under. At the risk of making this video very lame, I've realized I can't actually show you the old little one-way valves, which looks like these because they were badly torn and perished and I think I took this apart in that original video and I didn't keep them, sorry. They're probably in that original VST video though, so I'll see if I can grab some footage from that and splice it in. These one-way valves are operated by these little diaphragms and it looks like this one's torn, so that's simply the problem we're having with the soundboard. What I do have is the replacement ones. Now these valves came in a little kit that it actually appears to be the wrong kit for this pump. So I'm kind of glad there's nothing else wrong with this pump because these do seem right, but none of the other diaphragms and things seem to match. So what we'll do is we'll pop these in, put it back together, and then see if we can do our vacuum test and get a better result. These little rubber sort of fasteners, they're almost like a little rubber rivet, I guess you'd call them, um, are held in with a little barb. So I'll just push it through from the backside without stabbing myself in the hand. And I'll show you, this is what they look like. They've just got a little sort of barb on one end and then little flange on the other end. So the idea is they go through the center of these little one-way valves. And so they end up against one end, you still got the barb at the other end and the other end's against this flange. So on this side, you can see there's a circular seat here the other side doesn't have that here. So the valve on this one goes this side and this valve's gonna go on this side. So I just pushed it in then and used this little pick just to sort of give it a bit of a helping hand and get, get it so the barb was all the way through. So now you can see the little valves sealed on that side with the flange and then the head of that little sort of rivet bit is all the way through. So I'll put the other one in on this side so they're on opposite sides to each other and then we'll put it back together. So just going to push the old one through. Pushing it through is always better than pulling it through because if you pull it through it's going to stretch and it might break etc. So now we've got one valve each side. Let's put it back together and see what happens. A lot of these times with these pumps, if they've got a couple of different chambers and they need to go one way or the other, you'll see here it's a diagonal line. That way you can't sort of get things around the wrong way. So just have a look at which way it slopes so you get it the right way around. I'm going to put some Loctite on these bolts the way they had from the factory, but I'm gonna pop them on the wire wheel first just to get the old stuff off. So just a little stripe of Loctite down one side. Once I drop the nut down, I'm actually just going to use this little uh, pick just to hold it in place, just against the tip of the bolt until the first few threads start. Otherwise it can just sort of float around there and it never gets going. Now they're all run down completely. I'm just going to sort of go around once more and just give them each a little bit of a snug up. All right, let's give it a test again. So because I'm using positive pressure for this test, I'll go back into the outlet of it. So it was interesting then, as you can see, I'd squeeze it and the needle would bounce a bit, but it wasn't holding pressure at all. And I then just went on and put my finger over the end and did the pressure again and it still wasn't staying up. So what that shows is before it would stay up if I held my finger on it, which means the actual pump was sealed really well, but it was the one-way valves not working. In this case, the pump wasn't sealed well. The little O-ring section had actually come out of its screw when I took it apart. So obviously the great thing about doing that test is it lets you know something's working properly before you go put it back on the boat. You don't have to put it on 
find that it's not working, take it off again. Saves you lots of time. The other thing was straight away I knew that it was a problem with the actual casing of the pump nut sealing because putting the finger on the other outlet didn't help at all. So I've now got this seated a bit better. My bad for not really paying enough attention while I'm doing this video. But we'll get it back snugged up again and try again. So what we're getting now is if I pump it, it sort of bounces a bit, but this time if I block it off, it will still go up. And then if I let it go, you sort of see the needle drop more slowly. Now, I would expect the test to be a bit more positive than that, but what I will say is that test is from a Yamaha motor, and they have a really firm stainless steel reed valve instead of these little nylon discs. I've never had the reed valves crack or the one-way valves crack on a Yamaha one. It was interesting to see how completely perished they were on this Mercury one. You know, it's just, it's only a small component of the boat, but it is a component that stopped this boat running entirely. So, interesting to see. Let me go have a dig around my spares boxes and see if I can find an old fuel pump from a different boat. This one's from a Yamaha. So, I'll just pull it apart. This one's only got uh, three screws holding it together and it doesn't have the nuts on the side. They've tapped a thread into the back of the casing. Also, you can see here, this has got the little port on the back because it's off a two-stroke motor. So instead of having this push rod that's driven off the cam, it just gets a vacuum pulse from the crankcase. So very similar design. You've got the top cap with a complete seal around it. This one's actually got a bit of corrosion and things. It must have been from a sunk boat, I'd say. Then internally, then this is the pump side. It's nice and stuck together. So where the four stroke one had that plunger, this one's just got a diaphragm here. You can see here the diaphragm's torn here. So that's not gonna be pumping fuel very well at all. So it'll leak quite badly. Um, then you've got this section here, which is where the diaphragm sort of oscillate into. And then there's this hole in the center here, which came through into here, that moved the diaphragm back and forward. So different mechanism to drive the pump, but the center section is essentially two one-way valves. And in this case, instead of being those little sort of nylon discs, the one-way valves are these little metal reed valves and they can flex on here so they can open and then spring closed again. So I've never actually seen these fail. I would sort of suspect that because they, they move here, there was a chance of getting like a fatigue crack across it over time, but I've just never seen it personally. So I've got to say I'm a slightly bigger fan of this particular style of pump. I think they're just more strongly made. But as you saw, it's not that hard to replace those little discs, so maybe if you make it a bit of a service item if you're running a Mercury rather than letting them sit too long. That outboard wasn't that old, it's an EFI model. Um, I think it was only sort of three or four years old, so maybe do it every couple of years. One little thing that can happen with these reed valves is because they're, they've got a screw here, if you undo this screw, they can get a little bit misaligned like left and right, like this. So if there's any little edge that's not seating properly, it's gonna leak as well. It's probably worth mentioning that these pumps can sort of have a partial failure. They can get to the point like a, you know, a dicky heart on a person that it's pumping, just not pumping 100%. So you might find that it all works pretty well at mid range, but suddenly you're getting a bit of fuel starvation at full throttle. Maybe that's a sign of a fuel pump that's, you know, not completely failed, but on its way out, needs some attention. So that's about all for this video. I guess the main points are, you can use your pressure tester to test the pumps, and I'm kind of glad I did because it straight away showed me that this had a problem when I put it back together, as well as being a way of diagnosing there's a problem in the first place. Uh, these are great too, because obviously you test your gearboxes with them, so suddenly it makes it more worthwhile to invest. They're not particularly expensive, but I know by the time you buy a whole lot of custom tools, it does add up, so. Taking this apart, 
and visually inspecting it was all it needed to know. It's not like it's a special tool you really needed in order to be able to diagnose it. It's all physical components. If you can see a tear, if you can see some perishing, there's a problem. I hope it also just gives you a little idea about how these pumps work. They're pretty simple. It is just a diaphragm that pushes fuel backwards and forwards. And because of these series of one-way valves, a bit like a primer bulb, instead of just having fuel move backwards and forwards, fuel just starts to continually move forward. So they're pretty simple. They need a diaphragm to pump. The diaphragm needs to be moved by something, i.e. camshaft or the crank pressure. And those one-way valves need to be working. Another little check you can do with these mercury ones while it's off, obviously, is just make sure that the passage for the cooling water is clear. If it's blocked, you won't get a telltale and you'll start to get warm fuel and you might start to get vapor locks and that sort of thing as the fuel boils under pressure. So they're just another little thing to check while you've got it off, why not? All right, well, take care and thanks for watching. Next week, hopefully, I'll have the parts for the Evanry gearbox. So we'll put some new oil seals in that, uh, put some fresh oil in, Put it back on the motor and see if we get reverse. Mm -hmm.